All right, we're back for chapter 21 and 22. 21 has a full spread image here called the game. And so it's showing kind of the uh, shadow that the sun will create over um, these nuts here. So the time available. And then this is uh, the approximate amount of nuts per squirrel must be moved from start to finish. So the start is here and the finish it says somewhere over here, question mark. So they gotta go all through this forest to get to the game. The game, no, not really. All right. Jed watched the chattering teams bustle out of the grove. In the quiet they left behind, they heard how much closer the rumbling was already. Would there be time to carry out the half-baked plan? No, no, of course not. But they had to try, right? He began to dig one nut at a time. Every nut would help. The six teams, there may have been seven, maybe five, definitely more than four, probably less than eight, <laughs> made their way around towards the other grove. No one quite knew where they were going or how they would even know when they arrived. And while the rules for the game had sounded clear and simple, now there were some questions like, how long did the game last? How did you know when it was over? Still, everyone was psyched. Everyone wanted to win. They were all having fun. Dottie had run ahead of her team to scout out the situation. She stepped along the bow, bow and then stopped. Something, a sixth sense, told her she had just entered the other grove. From her out-of-the-way perch, she watched the comings and goings. Jed had said you got extra points for moving in without anyone noticing. You got the same number of extra points for making friends. Dottie planned to try for nobody noticing. That could be tricky because Jip was on her team. Maybe if she found something this, on this very tree on the outskirts, no one would hear them yapping. She looked down the tree. Nothing. She looked up. Was that an opening or just a dark spot? She scrambled up to see. Ha! It was a beautiful, uninhabited hollow. Triumphant, she raced back down to where her team could see her and beckoned them to start bringing stuff over. Burke was out ahead of his team, too. Every time he looked back, the other three were way behind, poking along, heads together, talking. When they saw him looking, they hurried to catch up. Come on, he said. We probably won't win, but you can at least try. Sorry, boss, said Chevy. We got sidetracked. Thanks for the pep talk, said Jetta. I feel so much more inspired now. Me too, said Chika, super motivated. Lead the way. And amazingly, they did seem super motivated. Even Chevy, who was older than dirt, hustled back and forth tirelessly with acorns and walnuts and chestnuts. Also, Chevy had called him Burke, boss. <laughs> Maybe they had a chance after all. Thanks to himself. The rumbling grew louder. There was whining in it now. <clears throat> Even the squirrels who were playing the hardest couldn't help but notice it. What does that sound, said Zach. It's driving me nuts, and I don't mean that in a good way. But why, what would you say, said Chai, if I told you that it's humans taking the forest away from around the buzz paths? <laughs> yeah, right, said Zach. What would you say if I told you that that's, that's it, that it's a swarm of giant bees or locusts, maybe? What would you say if I told you to put these nuts in your cheeks and take them to the other grove, said Chai? Blah, 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 said Zach. The squirrels of the other grove began to sense that something was afoot. There was that awful noise, and then there was also some sort of population explosion. <laughs> and there he is, <laughs> with his full cheeks. Have you noticed, said one elderly squirrel to his companion, that there seems to be more of us than usual? I thought maybe it was just me, said his friend. My memory isn't what it used to be, but I keep seeing squirrels I don't even recognize. And not one or two, but like a lot, like that one. It says, you may be feeling the same way. It's understandable. Excuse me, he called out. Are you from around here? The squirrel stopped. She took a nut from her teeth with her paws so she could speak. It's me, Charette, she said sweetly. Ah, uh, yes, said the old man. He didn't remember her, but he didn't want to admit it. Charette, nice to see you. Carry on then. And away she went. Hard to believe I could forget a face like that, said the old animal. The next time she scampered by, he called out, hello, Charette. For the time after that, he had convinced himself that he really did remember her. Meanwhile, coaxed the pups along in an easy path, singing songs and cracking corny jokes. For example, what is brown and sticky? A stick. <laughs> Somebody said you sounded like an owl. Who? Why did the mushroom go to the party? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> when they reached the new place, she led them down a tree and right into the middle of the grove. We're on a field trip, she said to the first local they saw. Is there a good place where we can set up camp? There they go with their little music notes. Field trip, asked the squirrel. Yes, said, we're going to a field to see what it's like. 
Oh, said the squirrel. Um, you can stay anywhere, I suppose. She looked up to suggest a likely spot. The tree seemed suddenly dotted with big, brushy leaf nests. She was sure there weren't that many yesterday, or maybe it just looked like more, with so many leaves down from the storm. But who did they belong to? And now a squirrel she had never seen before ran up a tree. Hey, who the heck was that? She said, scratching her head. That's Charette, she said, said one of the pups. Hi, Charette. Charette turned and waved, then went inside a nest. Sure who? asked the local. Charette, said quickly. She's with us, and it looks like she's already got a start on her camp. Come on up, kids. Up we go. Bring a leaf. The local squirrel, whose name was Buffy, I know, another one, watched them go. Then she watched another unfamiliar squirrel, this one with a face full of nuts scurry along a branch. And here came one with a reddish tinge in close conversation with two elderly greys. There must be a lot of these field trips happening today, she muttered, and to think that I had never heard of one before. She felt so unsettled, discombobulated. Was it these strangers or that weird rumbling? It kept getting louder and more drony and whiny and relentless. What the heck was it? She covered her ears and went off to her den. Something was happening. Something was not right. Something big. You couldn't see it, but you could hear it and feel it. You could even smell it. It was happening even closer, even louder. It was harsh and grating and shrill with thunks and wailing. Everyone was on edge. One by one, old timers and newcomers alike crawled into dens and nests and wished and hoped and waited for the bad feeling to go away. No one wanted to go back out and see what it was. It was too wrong out there. Our squirrels, the game playing squirrels, were in makeshift nests, which made it scarier yet. Some of them were doing better than others, snugged in by the pups. By now they thought she was the world's best babysitter. When she told them it would be okay, they believed her. In a nearby hollow, Burke's mouth was dry. His right eyelid twitched. He sent his tensed muscles pestered him impatiently to fight, either fight something or flee but he believed that he needed to be strong for his team. He had found them in this excellent shelter and now he would keep up morale. This too shall pass, he said. The darkest hour is just before the dawn. If we all work together and do what needs to be done, we can whistle a happy tune. Things like that. He had a million of them. And even though Chevy and Jota and especially Chaka all knew more about what was going on than Burke did, his words made them feel calmer. So maybe he really was a leader, at least in this situation. Chai's team was in a dray that was barely holding together. It was also trippy. Tippy. It wobbled each time someone moved or even coughed. Zek paced in circles around the others trying to calm himself. Chai felt the dray tilt dangerously from side to side as Zek circled. If we all just keep still, he said, I think. But he didn't finish because Zek had disappeared through a weak spot in the floor. The last thing they saw was a surprised look on his face. Instinctively, everyone backed away from the hole. The dray went off balance and tumbled out of the tree with all of them, minus Zek, inside. Yikes. There they go. Jed, the only squirrel still outside on purpose, was throwing together a quick nest when a movement caught his eye. He turned to see Zek and then the dre falling through the air. He winced as they hit the earth inches and seconds apart. Ouch, he said. But Zek jumped up uninjured and scrambled inside the collapsed dre. The leafy heap heavied, heaved and thrashed as if it might erupt. Then it seemed to shape itself from the inside into a mound and was still stored up. Dottie and Jip's team plastered themselves against the wall of a hollow Dottie had found. The opening faced back towards home, so noise came pouring in. On the upside, thought Dottie, I can't hear Jip. She could see that he was still talking. She could tell he was scared. She was scared, too. They all were. She willed herself to lean over and peer out of the hole. She couldn't see anything unusual, except a lightness that shouldn't be there, as if they were clearing. Dottie studied it, puzzled, until a wave of sound whomped in her face. She pulled her head back inside and shut her eyes tight. Charette's team was squabbling. She stepped outside, believe it or not, escape, to escape the noise. Plus, it was getting stuffy in there. Too many squirrels. Paws over her ears, she stood on a limb and looked towards the racket. She saw the lightness, too. She frowned, and then she headed off to see what it was. After a long time, the sound seemed to be moving by, leaving, and then abruptly it stopped. One by one, the squirrels ventured outside, and they were gathered in two clumps. One clump was made of the squirrels who had always lived there. The other was made up of the game playing squirrels. This, it was one of these new squirrels who spoke first. Is the game over now? Asked Dottie. I don't like this game. She shook her head, trying to get rid of the ringing in her ears. Game? Asked one of the locals. Is this what this is? A game? The two groups faced, turned to face each other. Charette raced into the grove, breathless. She looked from one group to the other. Charette, cried the old man. Hello, she said politely, nuts to you. Then she turned, searching until her eyes found Jed. 
Our grove, she said. It's, it's gone. Oh, no. Story first, fight later. Ugh, that doesn't sound good. So we got our two groups here. Ay, ay, ay. Don't look good. Both groups of squirrels turned towards Charette. The old man chuckled. He said, Charette, you silly girl, look around. You're in the grove, dear. But his friends and neighbors stared at the newcomers in bewilderment. Who are all of you? One of them called out. Why are you here? Someone shouted. Why did you all come at once? What do you want? A grumbling arose. The shouts turned quickly to, get out of here, leave us alone, and go back to your own grove. Uh-oh. But, but, Charette said, who's going to make us, said Burke. He stepped forward, ready for a fight. Yeah, said Jip. Who? He stuck, struck a menacing pose just aft of Burke, he, who he hoped to use as a shield if the going got nasty. Behind them, their baffled, com sorry, their, their baffled compatriots tensed up and prepared to defend themselves. The pups ran to their mothers, turned to Jed. Now what, she said. Jed jumped up onto a stump where he could be seen by everyone. We are squirrels like you, he said, and we brought our own nuts. May I tell you a story? Sorry. Story first, fight later. As the saying goes, Jed hoped it would pull true. He wasted no time. Amid the thick and intertwining bobs, among the limbs, branches, and leafy twigs of our grove, he began, the buzz paths ran. Even the very oldest squirrel cannot remember a time when they were not there. The squirrels crept towards him. Without planting, planning to, they stood closer and closer together. Maybe you've been in a group of people all listening together to a really good storyteller. Maybe it's your Uncle Norrell at Thanksgiving dinner. Everyone listens together and laughs together, and it makes us feel closer. It makes us feel like family. Jed was quite a squirrel. He wasn't a performer, but he forgot himself as he spoke from his heart. He was so sure now that every squirrel would want to hear this story that they did. He told of the hawk, the new grove, the reddish squirrels, chai, and the terrible cutting. He told how no one would listen and how they came up with the idea of a game. By the time he got to the end, which was the high part right before he started telling the story, everyone felt that they had been at his side through every twist and turn. And that didn't mean that they all believed what they were hearing. They weren't sure they were supposed to. Maybe it was just entertainment. Now you see, said Zach, there was so much better than the first time you, that was so much better than the first time you told it. And you put parts about us in. That was a good idea. I've chewed my finger claws practically down to the nubs just listening, said a squirrel from the new grove. If something like that were to actually happen, I don't know what I would do. But it did actually happen, said Jada. That's the whole point. It did happen, didn't it? All eyes turned to Jed. He looked at the sky. Through the nearly leafless trees, he could see that the sun was about to fall below the horizon. There would be light for a little while yet. Come see for yourselves, he said. I think there is just time see what happens next. Stay tuned.